Hi everybody, it is July 2nd, 2019. I received a video from a subscriber who wanted me to watch it. The illegals crossing our border, what's happening with this immigration issue, that I do want to remind everybody this immigration issue has been with us for decades. It never gets resolved and it's very easy to resolve it. Enforce the laws. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, both sides, the red and the blue, go at it. And the difference today is that, wow, it is out of control. And the out of controlness, well, do Americans even know what is going on? At our southern border survey, only 2 in 15 Americans aware of soaring illegal immigration to the United States. I'm going to go through a lot of material. I hope that I can do it quickly, but mm, you guys know uh, I, I have a problem with that. Department of Homeland Security frees 8.5 thousand illegal aliens in eight days. Two hundred and four thousand and a half uh, released in half a year. What? Department of Homeland Security under Trump releasing so many illegal aliens? And where are they going? Huh. Well, that's interesting. ICE to hire contractor to transport 225,000 migrants to shelters across the United States. Wait, uh, deportation, threatened, deporting, oh, but then stopped because the Democrats, well, they were finally going to negotiate, oh, but then I guess the, the negotiation, did they break down? Mm, what happened? I don't know. Uh, what is happening is you're being played. The Trump administration is looking to hire a private contractor that will be responsible for transporting approximately 225,000 migrant children and families to shelters across the country over the next five years as they wait for their asylum claims to be processed. The private company will be hired to transport approximately 60,000 people a year. It will work to arrange commercial flights and ground transportation for migrant children up to age 17 as well as adults with children and will provide food, clothing, hygiene products during transit. Sometimes the contractor will have to plan commercial or charter flights in a period of less than 24 hours. Wow. Okay. Yes. On demand escort services. Over the course of five years, this contract, uh, the migrants will be relocated from their points of entry or staging locations to Office of Refugee Resettlement Shelters or Family Residential Centers across the nation. Okay. So, we're flying illegal aliens all over the country? Really? Yeah, really. Here, you want to read U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, Transportation Services for Unaccompanied Children and Accompanied Children as Family Units. Okay. Uh, Border detention cells in Texas are so overcrowded that U.S. is using aircraft to move migrants. The flights conducted by U.S. Customs and Immigration Enforcement, uh, but the detainees remain in the custody of Border Patrol. Though ICE routinely uses aircraft to move detainees, among its detention facilities, it is very unusual for Border Patrol to fly recent arrivals from one part of the border to another 
to perform routine booking procedures. Homeland Security officials requested the aircraft because Border Patrol urgently needs to move single adults out of the lower Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. The agency is scrambling to make room for the large volume of families and children who have come across the border in dramatically high numbers in the past few days, past several days. Uh, some of these articles are a mm, month ago or two months ago, May 11, 2019. All right. Um, we all know that most of those who are crossing the border are young men. Young men. So when you hear ICE, Border Control, they make these statements about, oh, it's families and children who are not accompanied with, by a parent or they are accompanied by a parent. Heart, you know, pull those heartstrings. Uh, well, we've got a real problem. A real problem because a whole lot of young men are being sent all over our country. And guess what? TSA allowing illegal migrants to fly without proper documents? Really? Yes, really. Yes, really. So African migrants pass through San Antonio and swiftly fan out across the country? What is going on here? Roughly 300 Congolese and Angolan citizens who arrived in San Antonio the first week of June after crossing the U.S.-Mexico border days earlier have all briskly departed the city for destinations across the country and some with fuzzy plans based partly on hope. Huh. Okay, so they're not illegal immigrants from Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras fleeing fleeing their country because they can't feed their children. We also have an, an awful lot of uh, African illegal immigrants crossing the border. But do do realize, <laughs> and you know what, it's hard because what's happening has not changed from the Obama years. It has not changed. Obama's catch and release continues on. Though I believe Trump said that he stopped the catch and release a couple of years ago, he has not stopped it. They are still doing catch and release. Trump controls Department of Homeland Security, ICE, um, Border Patrol. So why? Why are all of these agencies flying, busing illegal aliens all over our country? especially when they know that 90% never show up for their immigration hearings. That's right. We've known this for decades. They don't show up. Oh, okay. Well, and they're not deported either. They're not searched for, looked for, nothing. They're just in communities all over the country. And we don't know what, what do, are, do you think that they are doing surveillance on all of those illegal immigrants coming across the border? Do you think that they're, they're flying without proper documentation? They're coming across the border illegally, uh, but without any kind of uh, documentation for our law enforcement to check out the backgrounds of these individuals. So, uh, Trump supporters, I do not understand your support for this guy. 
hundreds of illegals from Ebola-ridden Congo dumped in Texas, 350 more on the way. What is this? Oh, okay, New American. 35,000. Wait a second. It was 300. Oh, wait. And this was posted today. It was posted two hours ago. 35,000 Africans heading for U.S. border from the Congo. Yes, uh, where the Ebola outbreak, well, there's a crisis. But they're allowed entry into the United States. Is something wrong with this picture? Yes, of course there is. Do Americans care? I don't think so. Um, do they even know? Probably not. It's like the utter chaos that is taking place in our country. As long as the individual American who is comfortable doesn't have to see it in their own little life as they go about you know, doing their errands and going to work and coming home, they're fine. But do you not realize that they're in your community? And I'll show you <laughs> where they're being shipped, but they're being um, transported all over Maine, South Carolina, uh, Minnesota, all over. Migrants, they land in Ecuador. Ah, oh, yes, Ecuador. Yes, we have installed our puppet present president in Ecuador. So, they're flown into Ecuador, and then they head north. A surge underway, the likes of which neither has ever seen. Who are they? Halton and Ed Ringen, Ringenton. Um, these are journalists. Panama-based author and freelance journalist. And Diane Edrington, a nurse who volunteers for Panama missions. Okay, they did an investigation. And they found a whole surge of Africans in Ecuador. But this is what is happening. Um, it was the likes of which they had never seen. Obviously surpasses what they witnessed in December. Both saw massive numbers of Africans overwhelming government camps and smuggling infrastructure. Migrants know they're here to stay if they can get across the border, the U.S. border. Migrants admit they came to falsely claim asylum and take advantage of the disarray and laws about which they're, they've all heard from media reporting and those who already made it that guarantee they will get to live and work for years in the United States, probably permanently. And this was from talking to the migrants uh, these two who did this investigation. The migrants also know that leftist controlled sanctuary cities thwart the efforts of immigration and custom enforcement and well they'll be welcomed. They'll be welcomed. They're well aware of the time it takes for the asylum claims to be processed in a severely backlogged American system and that this was a major factor in deciding to leave home. A lot of these guys obviously do not qualify for asylum. So in other words, just like Central Americans, the Africans have been informed just what lies to tell to stay in the United States. Yes, there's an awful lot of organizations, not just in the United States, but in um, 
Central American countries, in Panama, in Ecuador, helping these migrants, telling them what to say when they get to the U.S. border. Oh, but this I didn't know. CNN broadcasts infomercials that not only tell the migrants how to get into the United States, but also it provides a list of cities that will welcome you with open arms. No shit. Didn't know that. Well, it's not a surprise, uh, considering it's CNN, but it is kind of a surprise that they would have infomercials. Has anybody seen one of those infomercials? I'd really like to get my hands on one. Panama. <clears throat> Panama is overwhelmed with migrants. Um, there are a lot of Africans now. So, Panama, Ecuador, well apparently Panama and Costa Rica have a formal bilateral policy which systematically transport migrants coming off the Darien Gap through their own territories and on to Nicaragua where the smugglers can pick them up and keep them moving to the U.S. border. Wow, countries are really involved, huh? So I guess these people are not just fleeing their country. Perhaps it's a an organized, deliberate crossing of our border. Okay, um, yeah, well, <laughs> it is. But the U.S., our government, yeah, Trump too, all involved in the invasion. It is an invasion. And it's going to suddenly erupt one day. And Americans, they're going to be scared shitless of what is happening in their own communities. Remember, Obama for the years that he was in office, how many illegal aliens who were incarcerated felonies, felonies, rape, uh, vehicular manslaughter, killing people, driving drunk, murder, armed robbery, how many did ICE and the Department of Homeland Security release from those jails right back onto the streets of a good old U.S. of A.? Well, roughly, and I posted on that, uh, roughly it was the numbers <clears throat> that I got, 200,000. 200,000. They weren't deported just like what's happening. Nothing has changed, guys. All right. Um, so, the controlled flow would likely spark controversy in the United States if anyone knew about it. Panama feeds, houses, shelters, and medically treats the migrants it collects out of the Darien jungle, then puts them on buses and hands them over to the Costa Ricans, who likewise move the hot potato problem to the U.S. southern border. The flood of illegals raises serious security concerns, don't you think, given the number of Middle Eastern Muslims in the illegal alien tsunami? Ha! Huh. Not just Central Americans from Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador. Here. Um, Del Rio Sector Border Patrol agents apprehended two large groups of over 102 days from Africa. Um, and 
there is video of a whole group crossing the Rio Grande. Let's see. They're being transported everywhere. Everywhere. South Carolina. Okay. Well, essentially, Charleston County. They love it because, ah, if we take in these immigrants, the federal government pays us. Money, money, money. Huh. A recent influx of hundreds of asylum seekers is bringing money and increased scrutiny to Charleston County's detention center amid the country's heightened immigration debate. The county remains <clears throat> excuse me, a willing partner to detain people, not just immigrants, on behalf of the federal government, and it expects to receive millions of dollars again this year for doing so. The sudden arrival of more than 400 asylum seekers since late December, uh, well, our people were surprised at the suddenness. We'll look at ICE, you know, uh, hiring private contractors to be ready uh, to transport illegal aliens within 24 hours. Huh. Well, it does seem like there's an awful lot of them then. Asylum seekers came through legal entry points in Southern California and Northern Mexico. So this North Carolina-based group that represents immigrants, uh, that organization helps coordinate legal support, including interpreters and staff. Well, why? I don't understand this, but one of, uh, one of the staff members of this organization in North Carolina said that differentiates them from other immigrant detainees at the county jail who were taken into custody after illegally entering the United States? Uh, okay. Uh, I don't see the difference. The asylum seekers came through legal entry point, points. Um, asylum seekers? Well, they're all seeking asylum, right? Fleeing their countries for a better life here in the United States. What differentiates coming through legal entry points? Well, the Border Patrol let them in. Instead of having to climb over a fence, there's nothing that differentiates. But they write this article because they don't want to alarm South Carolinians, especially those in Charleston County. There's nothing. That differentiates them. Um, our strong su suspicion is that Charleston is becoming a permanent, robust detention center for immigrants. Guess what? Shelters, family residential centers, detention centers that they're sent to, uh, you know, all over the country, they are being released into the communities. Um, Charleston County takes in significant money from holding federal detainees, which could provide an incentive for officials to continue or try to increase the flow of people held here. Yes, money, money, money. Okay, well, you know what? Um, <laughs> I posted a video a couple of months ago on South Carolinian law enforcement. They stealing so much money from South Carolinians that civil, you know, forfeiture, cops stopping people in cars, and, well, they have a lot of money on them, so they take it and say, we believe that this money is being used for drugs. No evidence, but they take the money. All right. If you don't know anything about civil forfeiture laws, then look into it. But cops are gangs. They're just gangs. Gang members who are stealing from residents instead of protecting them 
everything is about money. So I guess, you know, they wanted more money because they weren't stealing enough from the actual citizens here. Um, wow, man. First large group from Africa crosses Rio Grande into U.S. And where is the video? Ah, here it is. So, oh, it's not just Europe, not just Spain, where you see an awful lot of Africans, you know, crossing the channel from Africa right into Spain, and uh, those who are at the beach in Spain, you know, there are plenty of videos of Africans just, well, just what you see here, it's happening in other countries, and, well, let's listen to uh, the Ingram angle. Journalist talks to Congolese Congolese uh, migrants flooding into San Antonio. Now, earlier this week, we told you about the hundreds of Congolese migrants who entered our country via the southern border being dumped into San Antonio. My next guest, investigative journalist Urs Geriger, went there to get the real story for himself. And he's here with exclusive recordings and information for us. Urs, uh, you asked one of the migrants how they got here, and this is what she said. Let's watch. They seem very reluctant to give you information. Tell us about it. Yes, I approached them in a pretty chaotic scene on the sidewalk and then uh, I asked them where they're from and where, how they came here, and they said Ecuador. And it took a while that they, um, you know, were a little bit warmed up. And when they realized that I was asking about money and about who brought them here, they were backpacking. So they were not they were they were not answering at all. And um, when I came back a few minutes later, and um, you speak French, by the way, so Urs is Swiss, so he speaks German, French, and English. Show off. So you speak French, so it was easy for you to communicate with them. And you said that there are very few translators. So the 30 or so people that are outside the uh, the shelter, oh, you were able to speak to some of them. Yes, yes. And there were really a lack of translators. I think there was one other person there who worked officially. So um, I asked them, and they wouldn't tell me anything about how they got here. And then they started to get aggressive, and they were, were contradicting each other. They, one said they went through the forest, and the other one said, no, there was no forest. So, And they were actually arguing among themselves. And when it came to money, and help, that's when they started to get aggressive. I want to, I want to play some more of this. Um, here's one of the migrants telling you about her journey. Uh, no, no, they don't want to tell you. Why, why the secrecy about how they got here? I mean, people are concerned, you probably know, because there's been another outbreak fairly serious of Ebola in the Congo. Uh, now, there's a 21-day incubation period, so the sense is they couldn't be bringing it here. But still, people want to be sure. So that's why the questions are really important. Yes, yes they are really important. So this was back... Um, a couple of weeks ago, June 14, 2019, and this article that I read from is, uh, well, what, two hours ago? Um, the article in the New American with those investigators, and they confirm, yes, Ecuador, Panama, Ecuador, on to Costa Rica. Um, countries are involved. Governments 
are involved in transporting a whole lot of people to our country and well far from border US cities feel effect of migrant releases a surge of asylum seeking families have been straining cities along the southern US border for months but now the issue is flowing into cities far from Mexico where immigrants are being housed in an airplane hangar and rodeo fairgrounds and local authorities are struggling to keep up with the influx states like Florida, Michigan, New York, uh, anywhere in the United States. Cities and states are quietly making arrangements. Why quietly? If this is such a good thing, why be quiet about it? Because we're being set up here. New Mexico and Colorado reached an agreement to drop off some migrants in Denver. A remote desert town in California has helped hundreds reach shelters for short-term stays. Then where did they go? Uh, U.S. Immigration and Custom Enforcement has historically ensured that families had travel plans before releasing them, but last year it shortened custody stays in response to the growing numbers of arrivals from Mexico. They began dropping migrants off in cities along the border at burgeoning shelters and bus stations. So, they don't have to have any travel plans. There's so many, we just have to transport them all over our country. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, which turns over border crossers to ICE after arresting them, has begun flying migrants to other cities for processing and is releasing them directly into communities without going through ICE, saying their own facilities are at capacity. As numbers have swelled in border cities, authorities have begun looking farther inland. 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 Minnesota, Maine. Officials warned that the public warned the public of plans federal officials gave to fly 1,000 border crossers from El Paso, Texas, to two Florida counties per month to be processed and released into the community, calling it a humanitarian crisis that could create a homeless encampment. I was scared they were going to come here and live in tents. The mayor of Broward counties, uh, County, among the first to publicly oppose the plan. It's not that we are not welcoming. We are welcoming. We are inclusive. But we don't have resources for these people at this point. Detroit, Buffalo, New York were also considered um, as places to send migrants. But acting Homeland Security Secretary quashed the idea. New Mexico. The cities of Las Cruces, Deming, Albuquerque have embraced relief efforts, but the Board of Commissioners of sparsely populated Sierra County in the same state approved a resolution that opposes the relocation of migrants there, citing the area's impoverishment and lack of transportation. The New Mexico, the governor of New Mexico paid to bus migrants to Denver to help alleviate the strain on New Mexico and announced the state will offer grants to reimburse local government agencies that help migrants. In San Diego, officially, uh, officials recently opened a shuttered downtown courthouse slated for demolition in a joint effort with a coalition of religious and nonprofit groups that has served more than 14,000 members of asylum-seeking families since October. San Diego County sued the Trump administration for a change in policy that it says that uh, forced the county to spend resources it wouldn't normally have to. Border Patrol has also been releasing daily 65 migrants in the highly remote desert town of Blythe in California. Riverside County spokeswoman Brooke for, um, for Brooke says more than 1,800 asylum seekers 
have arrived to the town of 20,000 by late March. 250 migrants have been arriving each day in Deming, a city of 14,000 people. Half of them are spending a night or two at the fairgrounds, normally used for rodeos, and the rest go to an abandoned World War II airplane hangar. The most important thing is that we don't have a thousand migrants walking through the city of Deming. Well, eventually they will be. It's, you know, the cartel, ISIS, uh, not just Central Americans. Americans are ignorant. <clears throat> the Trump supporters are, hey, didn't you hear what Trump said? I don't care what he says. It's important to watch what he does and what he doesn't do. That's what's important. What's important is what is happening, not what Trump says. And what is happening on the border should really, well, it should scare the shit out of Americans because we don't know who is being let in here. ISIS plan to send Western operatives across Mexican border to attack U.S. Yeah, and now ISIS plans to attack New York on July 4th. Look, we've been getting these threats forever. Now you have to be... If you are an American, you must be traumatized. And But that doesn't mean that there won't be attacks. Uh, we're in trouble. We're just in trouble. Here. Okay. So I'm sure you heard about the father and his child drowning, trying to cross you know, over into the United States. And here's the picture that a lot of politicians have shed tears. I, I'm sorry. Our politicians don't care if people are dying crossing the border. They just don't. Okay? So the shedding of tears is, oh, an act. They are actors. So this, I don't know what it was, Instagram? Oh, a screenshot from a Facebook group and this Facebook group was uh, here inside the secret border patrol Facebook group where agents joke about migrant deaths and post sexist mem memes. So that's surprising. Really? Law enforcement? Uh, it doesn't surprise me. They even posted this video or picture, Casio Cortez. Well, and Trump speaks for itself. But I do want to bring your attention to what was said about this picture because when I saw the picture, my first thought was they don't look like they drowned. Now, maybe they drowned, but very soon after the body swells. But here, Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask, have y'all ever seen floaters this clean? I'm not trying to be an ass, but I have never seen floaters this clean. Could be an edited photo. Well, that's absolutely a possibility. And this photo has, wow, the drama that ensued. The drama queens on stage in Washington, D.C. It's sickening what is happening here. Pastors are Casio Cortez and mainstream media spewing misinformation on border facility conditions. Oh, do you know Miss Orcasio Cortez goes down to the border? And then, of course, oh, the inhumane conditions. Um, don't you remember during the Obama years, the kids that were caged? I do. Same thing 
going on, but the conditions, well, these pastors, uh, conditions at a Texas migrant detention center recently toured by Orcasio Cortez are nothing like what was described by the virtue signaling congresswoman. According to the president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference, Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, who advised Presidents Trump, Obama, George W. Bush on immigration reform, he said that, to my surprise, I saw something drastically different from the stories I've been hearing in our national discourse. We don't have national discourse anymore. It's gone. Discourse, please. We have screaming, fights, and drama. That's all we have now. Even as a veteran of immigration advocacy in the United States, I was shocked at the misinformation of the crisis at the border. We found no soil diapers, no deplorable conditions, no lack of basic necessities. And he went to that detention center where Ocasio-Cortez apparently was, but uh, some told him the sources from whom the negative coverage originated never toured the areas of the facility facility that we toured. They speculated political motivations. The pastors left encouraged by the commitment and dedication of American Border Patrol and immigration officers, many of whom are Latino, by the way. He said one emotional Border Patrol agent turned to him and said, referring to this vilification coming from drama queen Casio Cortez, he said, Pastor Sam, what they're saying about us is completely false. We care about these kids and have passion for our calling. Well, look, we've got an awful lot of Americans who can do really immoral things. Um, you know, who do you believe? Who do you believe? Like, well, I just don't believe Ocasio Cortez, but um, here. Yeah. We do call on our political leaders to set aside their personal agendas and begin focusing on resolving this immigration crisis. I, I, there's nothing in this drama queen that you know indicates she's trustworthy. Nothing. Now, there's an awful lot going on, man. And see, 42 minutes. I can't do this quickly. Um, all right, caged migrant children photo goes viral as left rages at Trump, except it happened under Obama. Obama, huh? Yeah, well, what else is happening under Trump? Uh, amid reports of severe abuse and neglect in the immigrant detention centers, the Trump administration is running Human rights campaigners are planning hundreds of demonstrations. Oh, Jesus. Really? 184 events in cities and towns across the country, beginning at 12 p.m. local time and throughout the afternoon. What is the date? I don't know. Maybe it was today. Um, see, all of... It's just a staged, dramatic play that we are watching unfold. Now, that does not mean to say that we're all safe with all of these illegal aliens crossing the border. We're not. We're not. But there may very well be another plan connected with that, that I guess I'm going to have to do in another video, but move on, move on, ACLU, the Center for Popular Democracy, and other organizations, they're planning this, uh, these events, cities, towns, oh my God, we have to, we, this is a humanitarian crisis, look at how these people are treated, and, well, we did hear 
from a pastor who went to the facility that they're talking about and shocked he is by the misinformation. But hey, go for it. Because Miss Drama Queen, she ignited, ignited the fire. And you guys, George Soros's uh, moveon.org, um, will just keep that fire burning. It's unbelievable what's happening in this country. We're talking systematic cruelty with a dehumanizing culture that treats them like animals. This isn't an accident. It's time to fight back against the racist regime that is causing suffering in our name and nothing is happening any differently than it happened under Obama. Okay, I'm gonna end now and I'm gonna do a part two. Yeah, a lot of information I bookmarked on immigration uh, that Americans just don't know. They do not know that in their own communities are an awful lot of illegal aliens and they are being released into the community and you have no idea who these people are at all.